My childhood was, um, it was great. I always felt very, like, loved. Yeah, I think I was quite a happy, bubbly young girl. I was always singing and, like, dancing and listening to music. And everyone used to call me a bit of a ray of sunshine. Um, but yeah, it was great. I think I was around like 12 or 13 when I started going to a grammar school and it was about an hour away. My parents were so proud of me. There was a lot of pressure for me to get in and do very well. I hadn't really experienced um, racism before, but when I got to that school, like there was a group of girls and they just started like, you know, name calling and like picking on like the way that I looked and stuff. I thought, you know, oh, they'd get bored and it would stop, but it didn't really, it just got worse. And that's when like the fear started. I think I started fearing going to classes and then I just started fearing going to school in general. And I, cause I'd wake up in the mornings and I'd just be crying. Cause I really just didn't want to go to school. You know, I didn't really recognise myself. I was just like, you know, like bubbly, um, happy-go-lucky, always smiling kind of girl, and that just disappeared, really. At home, I think I would, like, lash out because I felt really like, angry towards my parents, like they were to blame somehow. I think they just thought I was just being, like, a teenager, a moody teenager, and they'd say stuff like, oh, you know, putting too much pressure on yourself, you're not eating well, you need to sleep more, drink more, pray more. And it was a lot of, like, do's, rather than, you know, just, like, talking actually about, like, how I was feeling. Yeah, I remember the first time I had a panic attack. I just felt really, like, surreal. I wasn't in reality, and I just felt this sudden, like, wave over me, and I felt really tired. Then suddenly there was, like, a massive rush to my head. And I think I lost, like, vision in one eye, and then my ear was ringing. It, honestly, it felt like I was going to die. My dad was banging banging on the door and I think eventually he just like kicked the door in and that was when I think my parents realised that actually there was something else more serious going on than me just being like a teenager. School became really difficult after that because I think I started fearing that I was going to have a panic attack at school. I started like not going in um, and it was about a year after that I think I just became quite depressed and anxious. And that's when I decided to, like, get some help. The first time I went to see the GP, I found it quite confusing because it wasn't like I was ill or anything. Then I got in and I just, like, started, like, talking and talking. And I think it was the first time that I'd ever really talked about um, everything. It was only for, like, 10 minutes, but it felt so good. It felt like this huge, like, relief off me. I think... He made me realise that actually a lot of people were going through what I was going through, um, and that really helped. And he um, he then referred me to CAMS, which is a service for young people who were who were struggling with their mental health. I just think I felt really like excited because it felt like you know maybe I could be cured. He did offer me medication. I think it was beta blockers, but I like refused them because I think I thought that maybe if I was going to take medication, then that, that actually meant that there was something quite seriously wrong with me. Growing up, I had always heard my mum and dad, they talked about um, like a cousin of ours um, who now I realise has schizophrenia. You know, they talk about her in quite like a negative way. They would say like oh, it was a real shame for the parents and they called her like commonly, which basically means a mad girl. I think like I didn't want to take medication because I kind of feared that maybe I was turning into her. The worst thing was the wait for CAMS because after I'd gone to see the GP, I think it took like six months or so from when I was referred. It was really frustrating because I'd gotten really excited and I felt like there was like all this hope and then it kind of got taken away from me. 
After like six months or so, I started seeing someone from CAMS who is a CBT therapist, which is just a type of therapy. And I didn't really find it that useful, really. At first, it actually made me feel a lot worse. I think my therapist was a bit older and I found it quite patronising. She would tell me to use like a 15 minute worry window in the day, which I found really frustrating because it was like, well, if I like could just worry for a select period of a day, then I would. And the whole point is that I can't stop worrying. But then something went on and I kind of got changed to Grace. She was exactly like her name. She was just um, so warm. She really like understood me because she was mixed race. So she got a lot of like the cultural pressures of talking about um, mental health with your family. It's really simple, but I think she made me realize that like my thoughts are just like thoughts and that's it. And she made me realize the relationship between my thoughts and my behaviors and how actually they didn't need to have so much like pressure to them. And that helped me take a lot of the weight off me. And um, she introduced me to like mindfulness techniques. So I would like focus on my breathing and my counting and that really helped. She just brought a lot of like hope back into my life and everything just felt a little bit brighter. Now it's been like two years since, um, yeah, my first CBT session and I'm at college now and I'm feeling like I'm in a much better place. I wouldn't say that I'm like magically cured or anything, but I don't think it really works like that. I think like, um, yeah, I just feel like I understand my feelings like a lot better. I've kind of almost created my own support system. Like I talk to my friends a lot more about how I'm feeling. I chat a lot more now to my parents and um, not about everything you know and I think that's okay I think I've realized that they are from a different generation and they're not gonna understand like every bit of me and that's okay but I definitely don't blame them anymore and I feel like I've strengthened my own inner voice which I think is a really good place to be